All right. We are getting ready. We are getting ready. Excuse my little tardiness for one second or so. Just so y'all know, just so y'all know, the real deal, Frenchies, but I put it in the Tupperware, put it in the Tupperware. So I got two authentic chicken breasts from Frenchies. Amen. I ate two wings at the house, but y'all pray for me because, uh, Wife went in off of Montgomery and Victory, got the Frenchies, represented it, Brother Perry, uh, man from Third Ward, Detroit, the original, all the way out here to Acres Home. Now, the chicken tastes right, but I apologize about one thing. I want to show you something. This is what I apologize about. Man, Frenchies got sweet rolls. They got like the sweet Hawaiian rolls not the authentic biscuit. Now, y'all know Popeye's got the biscuit, but uh, we got the sweet Hawaiian rolls. So I really feel somewhat anticlimactic, and I'm not going to say anything, uh, but the excellent service that was rendered, I did not get a pepper. And so uh, I can't enjoy myself to my fullest extent because I don't have a pepper to work with my, uh, my, my chicken breast. So... So family, we're getting ready to get on here. We're going to get settled in. Look at the authenticity of the chicken breast from Frenchies. Amen. This is, the, this is the beauty of going to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church back in 1992 when I first started going. Amen. Amen. Right here. This is the beauty right here. Ah, Frenchies. And so <clears throat> we're getting ready to get into it. And... Hey, Warren, man, your wife keeps calling me. Catrice keeps calling me during the, you know, she called me three times in a row. Is there something wrong? Uh, can y'all text me on 832-353-8656? Uh, text me on that number. Uh, so I just need to know if something's wrong because she keeps calling me back. All right, y'all, let's get ready to dive into this. Y'all put y'all's picture in, man. I want to see what y'all working with on y'all's uh, on y'all's chicken. I don't think many of y'all were thinking I was going to really pull out to pull it out. So uh, we're going to Proverbs chapter seven. I hope that you enjoyed the kickoff today as we kicked off uh, the series, Real Authentic Wisdom, Proverbs chapter one, verse one through seven. So I hope you enjoyed that. But we're going to get into Proverbs chapter seven, two piece in a biscuit. And as I, some of y'all are still just checking in, here goes the authenticity of the Frenchies chicken breast sorry about the disappointing you know sweet you know hawaiian roll they didn't have a biscuit at frenchies so i asked my wife can you run the popeyes real quick for me and get me a biscuit and my wife looked at me and i saw the interesting nature of the look and i think that that meant that at this time frame brother you can eat that hawaiian uh uh roll so i said okay sounds good <clears throat> so we're going to dive into Proverbs chapter 7. And uh, see, that was wisdom. When I saw that look, when I asked her, hey, will you go to Popeye's and get me a roll real quick? I mean, a biscuit real quick. And when she looked at me the way she looked at me, I said, I got understanding. And that level of understanding was, no, I'm not going to get you one. Eat that sweet roll, and that's what you're going to have today. Amen? So, y'all, and then I, I, I need my, my, my pepper for a little bit later. So let's pray. Uh, Father, we thank you for the time uh, that we've had today at church already. Thank you for our brothers and sisters who have gathered with us, that are members and family of Crossover, and then those who are friends of Crossover. Pray that their times of worship have also been rich. Now, O oh God, Lord, we ask that you would be with us as we dive into this two-piece and a biscuit and the nugget from Proverbs chapter 7. And so, God, as a family, uh, Lord, who loves each other because we love you uh, and you loved us first. God, we pray that you would allow us to dive into and get some more wisdom, some more nuggets from Proverbs chapter 7. Amen? Amen. All right. I went to the Frenchies that is over off of uh, the one in Acres Home, off of uh, Montgomery and Victory. So I didn't go down to the tray. All right. Let's roll, y'all. 
Proverbs chapter 7. Um, now, remember, Proverbs 5, 6, and 7, the majority of the work that Solomon is doing is he's talking to his sons about how to have wise sexual behavior. And so Proverbs 7 is going to conclude kind of like his, uh, you know, his, his teaching, that what he's teaching them about this area of life. So let's dive in. So this is stuff that we can teach our children as well as learn from ourselves. So Proverbs chapter 7, start at verse 1. My son, keep my words and treasure my commandments within you. Keep my commandments and live and my teaching as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister, and call understanding your intimate friend, that they may keep you from an adulteress, from the foreigner who flatters with her words. For at the window of my house, I looked out through the lattice, and I saw among the naive, and I discerned among the youths, a young man lacking sense passing through the street near her corner. And he takes the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the middle of the night and in the darkness. And behold, the woman comes to meet him. Check this out. Dressed as a harlot and cunning of heart. She is boisterous and rebellious. Her feet did not remain at home. She is now in the streets now in the squares, and she lurks by every corner. So she seizes him and kisses him. And with a brazen face, she says to him, I was due to offer peace offerings today. I have paid my vows. Therefore, I come out to meet you, to seek your presence earnestly. And I found you. I spread my couch with coverings, with colored linens of Egypt. I have sprinkled my bed with myrrh and aloe and cinnamon. Come, let us drink our fill of love until the morning. Let us delight ourselves with caresses, for my husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him. At the full moon, he will come home. With her many persuasions, she entices him, and with her flattering words, she seduces him. Suddenly, he follows her, and as an ox goes to the slaughter, or as one in fetters to the discipline of a fool, until an arrow pierces through his liver as a bird hastens to the snare, so he does not know that it will cost him his life. Now, therefore, my sons, listen to me and pay attention to the words of my mouth. Do not let your heart turn aside to her ways. Do not stray into her path. Now, check out 26. For many are the victims she has cast down and numerous are all her slain. Her house is the way to Sheol, descending to the chambers of death. Proverbs chapter seven, powerful chapter as Solomon begins to close out uh a story of a parable, a proverb concerning a young man who ends up at the house of a harlot and what's going to happen to him. And so Solomon has been talking about it in Proverbs 5, talking about it in Proverbs 6. Proverbs 5, he says, there's an adulterous woman, her lips drip honey. She goes down to the way of death. And the Bible talks about that she doesn't even know that she's headed down this path and where she ends up. But with her smooth lips, she can reduce you uh, to a loaf of bread by the time we get to Proverbs 6. And then he says, but you ought to be enjoying your own wife and not this adulterous woman. And so now we come to Proverbs chapter 7, and he's going to close out with this whole chapter dealing with young men. How do you conduct yourselves wise sexually? And the way you got to do it, here's a nugget is by making sure that you avoid the adulterous woman. The adulterous woman got started in Proverbs 2.16, where he says, wisdom will keep you from the strange woman. And so now he says in Proverbs 7, here we go, diving into the nuggets. My son, keep my words and treasure my commandments within you. Keep my commandments and live and my teaching as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers, write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister 
and call understanding your intimate friend that they may keep you from an adulteress from the uh, from the foreigner who flatters with the words. Now, here go your nuggets in Proverbs seven, one through five. Here's nugget number one. Do you value the words of your father and wisdom more than you value the flattering words of an adulterous woman? See, there's going to have to be an evaluation made. Is what my dad said true or is what she said true? And as she flatters with her words and entices you with her words, your dad's trying to lead you to a path of life on how you conduct yourself, son. She's leading you to a path of death. The difference is, and I want you to really pay attention here. There's nothing that your dad can do for you sexually that she can. And so one of the reasons why we will devalue the instruction of father is because dad, you can't bring me to pleasure that she's going to bring me. And you're bringing me to purpose, but right now I'm seeking pleasure far more than I'm seeking purpose. It's just like Samson in the Bible. God had given him an amazing purpose to live by, Judges 13 through 16. But Samson pursued pleasure more than he pursued purpose. And so uh, Solomon begins to lay out uh, this, this thing. He says, son, you've got to look at my teaching as the apple of your eye. In other words, what, what ought to really hold your eye, your eyelids, and what you're thinking about and what you're focused on is my teaching. You've got to see what I've taught you about life as more attractive than them hips, lips, and fingertips. Now, that's the, that's the part to where the real decision on wisdom and discretion and those things are being made is that Solomon, dad's taught you this, and I'm teaching you, hey, there's going to be a woman for you, a wife, but that wife is yet to come. And so now while this woman, this grown woman is enticing you, just like Potiphar's wife enticed Joseph, but yet in Genesis chapter 37, Joseph says, she's, uh, Genesis chapter uh, 39, Joseph says, how can I do this evil thing and sin against God? So Joseph realizes I'm being enticed by an older woman, by a grown woman. But Joseph thinks about God and Joseph runs and turns away. Now, it looks like he experiences a little trouble, gets sold or gets put in prison. But Joseph maintained his relationship with God and did not mess up his relationship with God by sleeping with Potiphar's wife. So as we look at it, we're going to have to make some decisions. And those decisions are, are my decisions going to line up with pleasing my father, earthly, and my father, heavenly, versus pleasing myself individually and sexually, because the adulterous woman is offering something now. She's offering something now, and God wants me to wait for something later. That's going to be the nugget that, you, that we're all going to have to deal with. Who are we really dealing with when it comes down to uh, how we handle certain things? So this is my son, keep my words and treasure my commandments within you. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my commandments and live. They'll lead down the path of life. And my teaching as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And say to wisdom, you are my sister. Get intimately acquainted with wisdom and call understanding your intimate friend. Now, why? That they may keep you from an adulteress and from the foreigner who flatters with the words. So when you look at 7-1, it says, my son, keep my words. 7-5 ends, she flatters with words. Her words are going to be sexier. Her words are going to be more pleasurable. It seems like, whereas the words of the father are purposeful, her words are pleasurable. And that's where you're going to have to make the decision. That's where all of us are going to have to make the decision and, and see what we're going to do. Now, verse 6, he starts getting into the story. For at the window of my house, I looked out through my lattice. In other words, what, what Solomon is doing is he's saying, man, I was in my house. I was chilling. I'm just observing every day. And I looked outside and I looked outside and I saw a young man walking down to the house by the adulteress. He's observing what's getting ready to take place. And he says, I saw among the naive. Now, remember today in Proverbs chapter one, when we were teaching in church, that the goal of, of, of Proverbs and or wisdom is to take a naive or a young and inexperienced person and to make them wise. This person is inexperienced in this area, but they've been taught. Notice in one through four, he's been taught. But when it comes down to the actual temptation, the actual solicitation, uh, the actual enticement, 
uh, he hit the actual, that he's not experienced that yet. But now he's experiencing it, and he says, And I saw among the naive, I'm in verse 7, And I discerned among the youth a young man lacking sense. Now remember that the, the uh, adulterous woman, the harlot, um, she, she lacks sense. But in Proverbs 6, it says, The man who commits adultery with another man's wife is also lacking sense. So he now comes back to Proverbs 7, he says, Now look, this young man does not know what he's getting himself into. He sees right now the pleasure for the moment. Now, now, now park that in there, the pleasure for the moment. That's what he sees. But what Solomon sees is a young man lacking sense. And this young man who lacks sense, although sense has been offered, he ends up um, passing through the street near her corner. Now, notice this. He's passing by near her corner. We know how close to get to temptation. See, 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 that's a nugget right there. A nugget is, as many of us think that it's okay to get close to temptation, or as we might say, the brothers might say, man, it's okay, dog, to look at the menu, just don't order nothing and eat from the menu. So Solomon says, hey, I see a young dude, man, and this young brother is passing near the corner of her house, and he takes the way to her house. First of all, he's just passing by. But where he's really headed is to the destination of temptation. And so he passes and he takes the way to her house in twilight, in the evening, in the middle of the night, and in the darkness. Verse 9 says it's in twilight. It's in the evening. It's in the middle of the night. It's in darkness. Four times in verse 9 it says, <clears throat> man, you're engaged in dark activity. Why are you not going during the middle of the day? Why are you not going when the sunlight is out? Because guess what? You're trying to be sneaky. You're trying to be secretive. And you're trying to go at night when nobody would see you. No one would notice you. And so, son, you can try to act however act in, in, in innocent you are about it, but you were already gone. You, you were already going down the street. Your heart had already turned. And so you're on this path, and you're going by her street, and you're getting ready to engage in some dark activity. So he says this, And behold, a woman comes to meet him. And she's dressed as a harlot and cunning of heart. Now, in other words, she's going to put the body framework out there in such a way that you get a good quality observation of all she's working with. See, uh, he says these adulterous women, they're going to let you know what they're working with with that body. They're going to put that body on display. Why? Because you can't resist all of this. All that I'm working with, you can't resist this. Here's a nugget. When you see women consistently putting their bodies on display with no discretion. Now, you can't handle how a person is shaped and or formed, but she can handle how she presents it. And when she's got it all presented out to where everybody's looking, then, then son, realize you're walking down a dangerous street. Because this woman is putting her goods on display to attract men. She has a sexual goal to be sensual and to be sensu uh, uh, a sensuous woman to where you would get trapped in by her. Son, just because she looks good doesn't mean that she's going to be good. And so he lays it down and he says, she's dressed as a harlot, but she's cunning of heart. She's got a plan. I mean, she's she got a full plan. And then verse 11 begins to give you some descriptions of her, some adjectives. She's boisterous and rebellious, loud talker. Not, not, not quiet, boisterous and rebellious. Now, she's living in rebellion. Living in rebellion to what? We're going to see. She's living in rebellion to her covenant. She, she, uh, Proverbs 2 told us that she doesn't remember the covenant that she's made with God and or her husband. And so in Proverbs 7, it says, uh, she's boisterous and rebellious. Her feet did not remain at home. This is a traveling woman. This woman is looking for trouble. She's putting herself out there. And so she's not at home building up her home. Proverbs 14, verse 1, the wise woman builds her home. Proverbs 31, uh, she doesn't eat the bread of idleness. She, she's building up her home. This is a woman who does not keep her feet at home. She's out in the street. She's out lurking around. And now check this out, verse 12. She is now in the streets, now in the squares, and lurks by every corner. I'm looking for a victim. Who's it going to be? See, what we don't realize is a lot of times is... You may feel like that you were the one, 
but she was looking for, for, for victims the whole time. You just happened to be the dumb one that came first. And so what Solomon is trying to tell his sons, his sons, avoid being the dumb one. Avoid being the dude that lacks sense. Avoid being the one where you thought, oh man, she, she, she's just for here for me. No, this is how she rolls. This is how she travels. This is how she gets down. And so watch this. She lurks in every corner. Now, verse 13 says, since he went by, since he was near, since he was close, she seizes him and kisses him. He does not hold her and kiss her. That's not what the Bible says. She seizes him and, kiss, and kisses him. In other words, when you are dealing with an adulterous woman, she's normally sexually aggressive. She's sexually aggressive. She seizes him. She kisses him. So now it looks like, oh, man, she wants me. Man, and so now guess how, how are you feeling when a woman who's got her body on display and you see how good that body looks and she grabs you and kisses you first? She initiates the activity. He says, now this is not your wife initiating activity. This is the adulterous woman initiating activity. This is the adulterous woman putting her body on display. This is the adulterous woman out there like that. So he says she seizes him and kisses him. And with, her, with a brazen face, she says to him, I was due to offer peace offerings. Today I have paid my vows. Now here's the part, y'all, that y'all got to get. She, she just came back from church. She just came back from worship. I was due to offer peace offerings. In other words, that this woman ain't just a woman of the street. She's also a woman of the sanctuary. This very woman can be in the sanctuary. This very woman right here can be a woman that is connected with the covenant community and the things of God. J just read the verse. The verse says, uh, I was due to offer peace offerings today. Today I paid my vows. Man, she went and wrote her tithe and offering check, made sure that, you know, the Lord, they passed the basket. She tossed her money in. But let me show you what she did before she put her money in the basket. It says, I was due to offer peace offering today. Today I have paid my vows. But what was she doing before? Therefore, I've come out to meet you. You're the only one. There's nobody like you. Oh, oh, you're, you're just that guy. I came to seek your presence earnestly. And I found you. So now she's going to make you feel verbally like out of all the men in the world, my eyes were totally set on you. But yet she lurks in the streets. She was just waiting for her first victim. So be careful, men, of being the first victim and actually being the victim that's actually lacking sense. He says, if you're going to be wise, you got to know how to avoid this adulterous woman. Now, I found you. Now, now, here, here goes verse 16. I spread my couch with coverings and with colored linens of Egypt. I have sprinkled my bed with myrrh, aloe, and cinnamon. Now, notice what she's done before she went to church. She got the house tight. When you come in there, man, she, she, she sounds like Prince, Egyptian lace in the song, I Truly Adore You. Watch this. Uh, she says, I have spread my couch with coverings with the colored linens of Egypt. I have sprinkled my bed with myrrh, aloe, and cinnamon. No, she got the house smelling right. This isn't, a, this isn't a woman where the trash you know, ain't cleaned up. She got the house right. She got the, she, she's got the perfumes. She's got the aloe, the cinnamon, the myrrh. She got it all prepared and ready. Why? Because she was planning a victim before she went to church. I went to church and paid my vows. I went to church and you know, gave my peace offerings. But before I went to church, I was planning this, this encounter. So I've already, you, you're not going to walk back to her house and, and she ain't got the, uh, the stuff smelling right. She ain't got the bed looking right, the couch looking right. Oh, sit down right here. And you go in her house and say, not only is she fine, but she keeps a fine house. And, and the whole time she was planning to commit adultery. So watch this. He, he, she says, uh, um, come, this, this nugget right here, come let us drink our fill of love until the morning, let us delight ourselves with caresses. For my husband is not at home. He's gone on a long journey. He's taken a bag of money with him. At full noon, he will come home. Now notice this. Here, here's a nugget. Here's a nugget. This nugget goes to middle school. This nugget goes to high school. This nugget goes to college. This nugget goes to corporate America. This nugget goes everywhere. Watch this. Here's where you know you're having some bad sex. Check out this one verse, verse 18. Come let us drink our fill of love until morning. See, any time you have to leave the sex at a certain period of time, that's some bad sex. In other words, if you can't 
sleep with her and then lay with her and then hang out with her and talk with her. But whenever there's a time frame on your sexual activity, I got to do this and get out the crib before your dad gets home from work. I got to do this <laughs> and get out of the crib before your mom comes home from work. I, I got to do this and be through with this before your brother comes home from school. So anytime there's a time limit on your sex, see, you ought to be able to have some sex and just sit there, lay there, talk, you know, go get some food, come back into bed, get some more sex if you want some, come back for round two, round three. But anytime you, that, you, that you're dealing with uh, a time-limited sex, that means you're in jacked-up sex, sexual situation. Uh, let's do it until the morning. Why? Because my husband's coming home at twilight. See, so we, we can't really truly enjoy ourselves because there's another man involved in the equation. And, and, and here's the deal. My husband, she, she's miscalculated. And her miscalculation is going to cost you your life. She's miscalculated. Why? Because she said, oh, he's going to come home into, in, in the morning. Let's look at the text. Come, let us drink our fill of love. I'm in verse 18 until the morning. Let us delight ourselves with caresses. For my husband is not at home. He's gone on a long journey. It's a business trip. He's taking a bag of money with him. And at full moon, he'll come home. So she's getting ready to miscalculate what time. Her husband's coming home. And when she miscalculates it, the person who's going to suffer is the young man, naive and lacking sense, that he's going to go down to death. Now, check this out. Verse 21. With many persuasions, she entices him. And with her flattering lips, she seduces him. Now, watch, the, watch these many persuasions, how she enticed him. Number one, I let him see this body. Number one, I let him see all that I'm working with. And wouldn't you want some of what I'm working with? That's number one. That, the, the first thing is the display of the body. The next thing is that she's boisterous. She's rebellious. In other words, she, she doesn't follow the things of God. But, but, but she's enticing him because, hey, you're the one. She tells him with her voice, I came looking just for you. I, came, you, I, I don't know what it is, but when you talk to me, there's just a level of understanding that I seem to have. And there's, you know, there's just the way you say things and put things in. And you're, you're the one. She's enticing him the whole time. She's enticing him when, when, when she kisses him first and, and, and lets him know, hey, this is just the first kiss. We, we, we ain't done. Then she entices him when she's already got the house straight. When they do, remember, he's walking by the door. He's walking by her house. But now he's inside the house. When he gets inside the house, man, the couch is straight. Man, the, the house smelling all good. Man, she, she set the environment. She ready. And so with her many persuasions, she entices him. And with her flattering lips, she seduces him. Check out this. We're down to the end. Suddenly, he follows her. Man, I, got, I, I can't resist this. I, I got I to gotta get in on this tonight. And as an ox that goes to the slaughter or as one in fetters to the discipline of fool, until an arrow pierces through his liver as a bird hastens to the snare, so he does not know it's going to cost him his life. What in the world did verse 22 and verse 23 say? He made a decision. He had an evaluation like we talked about today. He had an evaluation and he made a decision. And my decision is, is I'm going to follow her to her house. He does not know that he's an ox going to the slaughter. Y'all, I got my Frenchies right here, you know, and, 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 and when, we're, when we're done, I'm going to get on this chicken breast. But do you realize that this chicken that got cooked by Frenchies, he was just randomly walking. They got him. They put him on the little feeder, put him up the little conveyor belt, chopped his head off. He didn't know he was going to be, get slaughtered. He just walking down the stage. He does not know how the day is going to end. Because if the chicken, your two-piece and your biscuit, knew the way it was going to end up, he'd be running the opposite direction. But because he does not know, he runs to it, and he follows her to her house. And he's going to the slaughter. He doesn't realize he's going to, kill, he's going to die. Or one to the discipline of a fool. He's now moved, remember what we talked about earlier, from being naive and young to a fool. Today, in, in Sunday service, Proverbs chapter 1, it, you can either be wise and increase in knowledge and, and, and acquire wise counsel, or you'll be a fool who rejects knowledge and instruction. Notice that this young man, what Solomon saw, was a naive young man who's now the fool. See, see the, our decisions 
are going to take us somewhere. Whether they take us to, uh, we've got a baby out of wedlock now, and we're not ready for that responsibility, or whether or not we got a disease, Proverbs chapter 5, and we were not, never expecting that. Whatever it's going to cost us, did you know it's going to cost you your life? And notice this, verse 23, until an arrow pierces his liver. How in the world do we get to an arrow that pierces his liver? What happened? There was a time miscalculation. She thought we're going to have our sexual fun until the morning and you'll get out of here and my husband will never know what happened. But guess what? The husband decided to come home early because his business trip had been too long and he had missed his wife too much. And all of a sudden, the husband opens the door to the house. As the open, husband opens the door to the house, he hears some noise going on. He sees some clothes on the ground. And the husband decides, uh-oh, somebody's in my house with my woman. And so what does the husband do? The husband goes and gets his arrow. And what does he do? He pierces him through the liver. He kills him. He never knew it. Why? Because there was a miscalculation of sexual time. Why have so many of us had to, during spring break, run out the house when we heard the garage door go open, jump over the fence, and wonder if we're going to get caught? Why? Because you're always having bad sex when you can't stay. Drop that nugget. You're always having bad sex when you can't stay. When you got to run out before somebody comes, that's bad sex. When you can stay all day, that's some good sex. Okay, so, so, so watch that nugget. She miscalculated, and the miscalculation cost him his life. He didn't kill the wife. He killed him. So what happens when these sexual encounters lead to death when they were supposed to bring life? See, when you go back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28, God told us to be fruitful and multiply. He blessed us, told us to be fruitful and multiply. Remember that that blessing was designed to bring forth a child. So how all of a sudden in God says in Genesis chapter 1, everything I've created is very good. I, he looked at it and said, it's very good. Why is God saying that? The sexual relationship between husband and wife is good. But when you have one out of sight, this sex, it's under the blessing. The, the recreational sex in Proverbs 5 with your wife, it's under the blessing. But this sex with the adulterous woman, it's under the curse. And so the man ends up dead. If you go back to the law, God said the man who commits adultery with another man's wife, he said that man is to be stoned and killed. So in other words, God would authorize some of the discipline that takes place to individuals that have uh, you know, they have sexual affairs. We mentioned the other day, and this is, please understand, no shade at all. Um, Steve McNair, quarterback for the Tennessee Titans, would have never thought that that day that he went over to his adulterous wife's, excuse me, his adulterous woman's home that day. Steve McNair did not know that she was going to shoot him in the head and kill him. Steve McNair was taking a, taking a nap after having had a sexual relationship with her. And while he's taking a nap, she shoots him in the head, he's dead. It's right here in the Bible, Proverbs 7. These are the things of wisdom that the Bible has been trying to teach us. Uh, now watch this, verse 24. Now therefore, my sons, listen to me and pay attention to the words of my mouth. Do not let your heart turn aside to her ways. Do not stray into her paths, for many are her victims. Now when it drops, many are her victims. Here's this nugget that you want to get. How in the world do we all seem to think that we're the one that won't get caught? How in the world do we all think, man, man, ain't nobody going to catch me, man. I'm good with mine. I, I've been running game for a while. You know what I'm saying? I, I know how to run game. But here's the real thing is that the Bible says something back in Proverbs 5. Back in Proverbs 5, verse 21, just in case you never get caught on earth, check out this one. Proverbs 5, verse 21. For the ways of a man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he watches all of his past. For his own iniquities will capture the wicked, and he will be held with the cords of his sin. He will die for lack of uh, instruction, and the greatness of the folly he will go astray. Notice this, is that there are things that we have done to where we got away, and our parents don't know about it, and her parents don't know about it. Ladies, your parents don't know about it, his parents don't know about it. And we felt like we got away with it, except in the eyes of God, he saw it all. And so this is why we got to understand that this is not just about what we can sneak and maneuver around and do and so-called get away with in the eyes of men. This is about the fear of the Lord. How do we fear God and turn from evil? So it says, for many are the victims that she has cast down. In other words, if all these great men that have been caught 
in sexual affairs and sexual, uh, uh, you know, exploits, uh, exploit opportunities. He says, if all these men have been caught, you think you're not going to? You, you think it ain't going to go down with you? He says this, this adulterous woman's house is the way to Sheol, descending to the chambers of death. There's nothing good going to come out of an immoral relationship. Nothing good. Now, you say, well, man, pastor, I'm still alive and I have 15, 20. Not knowing that the whole time, the wages of sin are death. Not knowing that everybody's drawn away by their own lust. And when lust is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is fully accomplished, it brings forth death. Some of the things that we've done in high school are just on the record towards our physical death. They're leading us there to physical death. That's physical death. Our sins are the, the wages of sin, death. All right? But what about spiritual death? What about when we're so sexually foul that we can no longer represent God? See, there's one thing with a physical death, but there's something totally different with a spiritual death to where we've gone astray from God and gone so far away that we do not repent, we do not return, we do not restore a relationship with God, and we end up um, in the chambers of death. And this lady led us down the road. So that's Proverbs 7. Uh, tomorrow we'll be back on our regular uh, noonday nuggets. But Proverbs 7 drops some stuff that we all need to pay attention to. And we need to be able to talk to our boys. And we need to be able to talk to our daughters. Because in the series, when we get to this wise sex and unwise sin section, Proverbs 5, 6, and 7, as we deal with Proverbs and when we get there, I need you to know this, <clears throat> is that this is instruction in the book of Proverbs primarily for sons. But there's going to be some instruction as well in the book of Deuteronomy for daughters. So this is not like all this weight is on boys. There's also a mutual weight uh, to walk worthy on females. And so the goal is, is for us to walk in this way together so that when we get together and marry each other, that we marry each other virgins. That was the goal that God had so that we would not have strangers with us, that we would not have others in the bedroom with us as it talks about in Proverbs chapter 5. As I go back to Proverbs chapter 5, in case you uh, missed it, verse 15, drink water from your own cistern, fresh water from your own well. Should your springs be dispersed to broad streams of water in the streets? Verse 17 of Proverbs 5, let them be yours alone and not for strangers with you. Now, when he says not for strangers with you, he's saying that the women or the men that we've been with in the past, now that we're married, we're bringing these other individuals into our bedroom. We're bringing our experiences with them. It's like a recorder. And so he says, that's not what was designed in a wise sex life. A wise sex life was designed for you to enjoy your wife of your youth and everything that you needed to learn about sex would have come from an experience with your wife. Not all these other women that you're pulling this trick on your wife, this, this opportunity, you know, you're doing this and this. And what you're doing with your wife or what you're doing with your husband is based on what you've already experienced from somebody else. That's what the Bible means when it says don't bring other people into your bedroom. And so when we look at Proverbs chapter 7 um, and we look at the wisdom that Solomon has dropped, Solomon has dropped a good two and a half chapters of three chapters. Why? Because the sexual relationship is one of the very first relationships that men and women are going to get involved in that is either going to produce the image of God in your family or it's going to produce a lot of problems, whether it's fatherless homes, whether it's children being raised without their parents, uh, divorces, all those type of things. And so that's why Solomon drops these nuggets, because sex is not just sex. This is you're talking about the reproduction and the beginning blessing of God to where we have children through this sexual relationship. And now we raise children to the image of the glory of God. And so that's why it's so important. So uh, any questions? It's Sunday. I'm getting ready to get down in the gym with my son. Uh, he's in here shooting some J's. And also, I got to dive on my two-piece. Uh, did, did, did anybody did anybody go get some chicken? Y'all let me know. Give me in the thread and tell me if, if, if y'all got some chicken. Did anybody get some chicken? Anybody get some chicken? Come on now. Tell me in the thread if you got some. Somebody got some nuggets? All right. Hold up. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's Frenchies, baby. That's Frenchies right there. Chicken chicken breast right there. Now imagine if I had my pepper with it. Just imagine. 
This ain't a biscuit. This is not a biscuit. <laughs> this, this is a sweet wine roll. Amen. All right. Don said, we about to get some. Uh, all right. Yes, I went and got my chicken. All right. Uh-oh. Carol Jr. went to churches. Popeye's is on deck. All right, Brother Henry. Brother Henry, man, get a brother an extra biscuit, man. This, this ain't a biscuit. You know what I'm saying? This, this, is, a, this is a sweet roll. But, but but this right here, that's that's Frenchies. Look, 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 look. Whenever you see these colors right here, that's Frenchies, amen? So uh, y'all make sure next Sunday on the 14th, Lord willing, we'll be back with a two-piece and a biscuit. I bet you I have a biscuit next week and not no Hawaiian roll and all that kind of stuff. I bet you I have uh, some jalapeno on my, on, on my chicken breast next week, amen? All right. Brother Henry, come on, man. Come on, Brother Henry. Brother Henry th thinks, says, thinks like this. Pastor Blake, I didn't come to be served, but to serve and give my life away. I got you on the biscuit. Thank you, Brother Henry. I appreciate y'all. Um, So much love, y'all. I hope that you enjoyed Proverbs chapter 7. Hope that you had a good time in it. Uh, I'm going to get on this Frenchies and uh, watch Robert Chan shoot some jumpers. Uh, I'll need to work my Frenchies off. But I'm a, but I'm gonna get something to work off, amen. So looking forward to it, my man Mark Brown. I see you in the house. God bless. Hey y'all. Um, any any questions before we go? Any questions before we go? Amen. None. I appreciate y'all. Carol Gonzalez. That's right. I'm gonna get my pepper. I asked my wife. I said, baby, will you will you go give me a pepper biscuit? I don't, I don't think that was working. She said, I don't, I don't already gone to Acres Home for you. I I, I ain't finna do it, amen. So. Much love. Thank you, Sister Rockmore. Thank you, all family. Uh, that's a big nugget to digest spiritually. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Much love, y'all. God bless. See y'all soon. Have a great uh, week. Uh, we'll be in Proverbs chapter 14 next Sunday. Two piece in a biscuit. But tomorrow we'll be back uh, on Noonday Nuggets at uh, on chapter 8 of Proverbs. And looking forward to next week, uh, Wise Parents and foolish friends. Amen. God bless y'all. Much love. Enjoy your Sunday.